Hi everyone, this is James. I have a new video for you and it is called Rapture John 316. So let me begin. Now I'm recording this video November the 12th, 2023 and I'm going to start right here. Now I want to start with November the 16th, 2023. Now that is the third of Kislev 5784. I think this is a very high watch time. Really any time the rapture could happen tonight the next few days but again i do not know when the rapture is going to happen i just want to show you what i found i thought it was very interesting and it really looks like our god is behind the scenes so let me show you what i found now november the 16th as you can see you've got 316 right here and this is the tetragrammaton or the tetragram for yhwh and that stands for yahweh so you got 1316 and right here you've got 1316 it's like a mirror image okay and you also have it the other way 1316 okay so you have 1316 right there and you also have the 8 and 8 8 and then 3 going into 5 is 8 so i think that is interesting but look at this okay you have three three right here it's like three three and then nine is actually it's missing from this one it's right here in my second watch okay and i this was not my intent for this to happen okay for this to align okay so i just thought that was really interesting now i got some more to show you so let me continue now november the 13th 2023 so tonight at midnight or tomorrow it is the last day of Heshvan, so it's 29 Heshvan 5784, and right here we have 29 in both these watches. You've got right here 28, you got 2 and 8, 28, okay, and then you have 13 right here, or you have 13 right here, okay, so that is interesting. Now, 29 means resurrection and you're going to see in, in a bit in a few of my slides i'm going to talk about 29 and then 28 you add these two together you get 28 that means eternal life okay so again some pretty amazing alignments also matching so i'm going to continue now again i want to show you this part of the matrix this is for my second matrix and I've talked about this in many of my videos, and I'm not going to really talk about that now, but I just want to show you that you do have 911 here. You have 911 in this one, and you have 911 here, okay? And then there's 911 here, just like in this watch, okay? And then you have the 5, the 6, 7 from here. You've got 53 here. You got six, the cross, and eight right here, where 74 represents the cross. And I'll show you that in a moment where I get that from. And you also have A, and again, I'm going to show you that in a, in a moment. But uh, let me continue. Now, near the bottom, I added the phi symbol. Now, this is God's golden ratio. It is also known as the Fibonacci golden ratio. But God allowed Fibonacci to discover it. It is actually God's fingerprint and it is all throughout nature. And if you take a look at your hand, the tip of your finger, God's golden spiral is there. Okay. Now, here is the number, golden ratio number, 1.618033939. It continues from there. Now, take a look at this. You've got 1.618. 0, 3, 3, and then 9, all right here, okay? and Or on this one, 9's here. All right, so not a coincidence. And again, you got the 1316 in here, I mentioned before. And of course, you have 316 in here. You got 316 this way, and then 316, just like in John 316. So that is very interesting. Now I got something incredible that I want to show you in the next slide. Now, right here in the center of this slide, now this is God's golden spiral. 
and what I did was impose it on my watch and if you take a look you've got one one two three five eight and that is what we're seeing you had the one one right here okay where it looks like a cross all right and then you have two three right here you've got five right here you also got the three so like three into five which that's how it works okay in the golden sequence okay two and three add them together equals five and then three and five equals eight okay so that's how it works and then you have eight and the eight is actually under here okay so absolutely incredible now it might be highlighting possibly when the rapture is going to happen but i don't know uh, but i think it's very interesting to say the least and again eight means eternity five means grace and three means holy spirit or third person in the holy trinity okay so very interesting how this is coming together and of course 23 you have 23 right here you have 23 right here so i mean this is definitely god behind the scenes you know this is not a coincidence you know I, and i did not plan this myself so let me continue i got more to show you now i want to show you a few screenshots from the torah calendar of previous dates now these are one is the passover and one is the second passover now this passover was the year i was born that was in 1974 and i just want to show you that these always land on the 14th okay in the hebrew calendar and in the torah calendar now 14 means salvation that is the biblical meaning attached to 14 however in simple gematria dead equals 14 also so if you do not accept the free gift from god of salvation you know what jesus christ did for you he shed his precious blood on the cross for the atonement of your soul and the forgiveness of your sins if you do not accept the free gift to believe the gospel then you you do not receive grace and you die okay you're gonna have two deaths you know the death in this life and then you go to the lake of fire and that is the second death okay so you want to if you're watching this video after the rapture has happened you definitely want to turn to jesus christ your lord and savior or yeshua okay and also in english gematria it is 84 okay and it's quite interesting now if you read it from right to left like hebrew it'd be 48 and you have a 48 here and jesus in simple gematria equals 74 and we have a 74 here so and then we have in this is both my first matrix now this is right at the top and this is right in the middle you have 14 you have 14 just like i'm displaying here and you have the 29 also okay in the second passover and this is may 5th 2023 now however the second Passover this year was probably not May 5th. Um, it looked like the actual Passover in 2023 was highlighted by a eclipse, and that was April the 20th. Okay, so in, in the the next slides to come, I'll show you how that will make a difference, or what makes that very interesting. Now. I want to show you a few things here. You have the fast of Esther. Okay, these are the verses recommended to read. Okay, in the Torah calendar. So Esther 4, chapter 4, verses 16. I'm going to share that in a slides to come, but it's very interesting. All right, and even the Julian calendar it is 146. So again, you have the same numbers, which is quite interesting. Now, I want to show you this. 2 Chronicles, okay, chapter 29, 1 through 27. I recommend that you read that. I'm not going to read that here, but I'm going to share with you Numbers chapter 9, verses 6 through 14 in the slides to come. And you're going to see why, okay, why that I included it, why it's significant, I believe. And you also have the Omer day, okay, 29, and 29 means resurrection. Now, 70 means Israel's restoration okay 
So this could be the year that the the Lord comes and then the tribulation starts and that's when the Lord will start working with Israel and restoring Israel. You know, but it's going to take the tribulation to do so, okay? So I wanted to share with you 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16. And again, you're seeing those same numbers, okay? But let me read that for you. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Now, 23 equals death, and we're in the year 2023, the Gregorian calendar, so that's interesting. So you have the dead in Christ shall rise first. Okay, and, it, and there's actually here you'll see the first will be last and the last will be first. So again, that's interesting. You know, that was in my matrix. Okay, and if you take a look in the Bible, you'll find verses relating to that. So I'm going to continue. Now, again, this image here back November the 9th of 2022 this is when with my matrix and, and with the help of the power of the Holy Spirit I was able to decode a message and what it says you are at the crossroads of the future we will meet at the cross with absolute faith okay and now here's a four here and there's some crosses also and then this looks like a tidal wave or something or it's got it's got God's golden spiral in here a couple times, but I'm going to show you why that is very interesting in a moment. And I want to show you I am in simple gematria equals 23. The result is 23. Now, end in simple gematria also means 23. Now, the year was 2022. Now, 22 means light making manifest. So, possibly that could indicate the rapture. So let me show you the next. Now, using the information in that decoded message, I want to show you something. Now, first of all, it mentioned that we're going to meet at the cross with absolute faith. Now, right here, we have 74. Okay, and also here is a cross. Now, it also mentioned that we're going to meet with absolute faith. Now, in my second matrix, I took a little screenshot here. That A could stand for absolute faith or appointed day, possibly. Okay, and then also right here, this is the Aleph or Alpha right here. Okay, so God is the Alpha and Omega. And there's actually an Omega sign here, it's kind of covered up. But, uh, you know, that's interesting too. So that could stand maybe for the A. And then faith, look at this, faith 19, that number is linked, biblical meaning is linked to faith. And 20, that number, the biblical meaning is related to redemption. So again, that's very interesting. Now, and of course, I mentioned that in simple gematria, Jesus, the result is 74, and cross equals 74. Of course, we're seeing that here. And now take a look at this. I use the time and date calendar calculator and I put in a few dates. Now this is when many of us believe that the actual Passover happened April 20th, 2023. And many of us believe that the actual Feast of Trumpets happened September the 20th, 2023. Now look at the result, 153 days, just like in John chapter 21, it talks about when the apostles had no luck catching any fish and then they seen Jesus Christ on the land, on the shore, and he told them, you know, throw the net on the right side and then they pulled up 153 fish. Of course, I'm paraphrasing here, but if you take a look at those verses, I'll actually include those in the next slides. But you see, look at that, that is just incredible, 153 days. And again, we're seeing right here, you've got one, five, three, right in here. And it lines up this area where it really looks like a very high watch time. And you've got five months, that duration. And five means grace. And then you have 21, look at this, 21 weeks and six days. You've got 21 right here. And then you have a six right here, okay? 
So I just thought that was very interesting. And everybody, or most people know the saying, hindsight is 2020. That's why I drew these little glasses in here. So I just think that is incredible. Possibly that message that was decoded here. Okay, is coming to fruition. And we're, time will tell, but it's very interesting to say the least. Now, I'm going to start with John chapter 21, verses 8 through 12. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but as it were, 200 cubits dragging the net with fishes. Now, it is possible that this could be a typology of the future rapture, I think. Now, the other disciples could also be... A, a dual fulfillment of us, you know, us servants that are born again, that share the gospel. And now this could indicate us servants that are born again, that are sharing the gospel and help bring people to the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, those that are born again, that are saved. Now, I just want to show you back here in this slide. This is what I felt the Lord wanted me to draw or illustrate. You have a small boat and you have a cell. Okay, so I just thought that's interesting. And I, while I was creating this presentation, I just thought of that, how it could relate to us and how that little small boat could relate. So that's interesting. And now nine, the rapture and the tribulation is probably going to start at the same time. So the Lord has, you know, the fish, some fish already on the coals. And it says here in uh, verses 10, Jesus saith unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. And verses 11, Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes, and 153, and for all were so many, yet were not the net broken. So again, this could be the great harvest, the multitude. Okay, possibly. So... That's very interesting. There we see the 153 fish. And again, you see the 153 very prominent here in both the watches. You got one, five, three, and then you got one, five, three right here. Okay. And again, in John chapter 2, verses 1 through 11, we're really seeing, again, a typology, I believe, of the rapture happen with the wedding in Cana. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you how these numbers relate. Okay, in a moment, I just want to touch on a few of these verses. Now, verses 6, And there were set there six water pots of stones after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. Now, that's why I put the two and three here, and also the six for the verse, okay, and this for the six water pots, okay, and and I'll read verses 7. Jesus saith unto them, Fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. And then verses 8. And he saith unto them, Draw out now, and bear unto the governor of the feast. And they bear it. Okay, now, this really sounds like rapture typology. It sounds like the Lord's going to draw us out of the water, or the people. Water can represent people and nations. Okay, so that's very interesting. And what we're looking at, at this time period that I believe is a very high watch days for the rapture, okay, is at this time period. I'll show you again. So you got the eight here, and of course you have the eight here. Okay, and then the ninth verse, when the rule of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew the governor of the feast called the bridegroom. So it sounds like those that are born again, they're taken out of this world and, and are with the Lord and at the wedding feast of the Lamb. Okay, I believe that what this would represent is like a typology. But for those that are left behind, it's going to be a very tough time of tribulation. And again, if you're watching this video after the rapture has happened, you, there is still hope. You still can be saved. But you're going to want to follow what the Bible says, trust in the word of God and the two witnesses will come on the scene and you're going to listen to them. Take a look in your Bible, Revelation chapter 11, verses three, but you still can be saved. You cannot take the mark of the beast, cannot worship the beast either. You cannot. 
You must trust in God, not in man. All right. So, and then you have 10, and 10, okay, represents usually fullness or completion, or it's also attached to a Gentile number. So it could be the fullness of the Gentiles. And let me read that. And saith unto him, every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk, then that which is worse, but thou hast kept the good wine until now. So could indicate, you know, possibly the rapture has happened. The born again believers are gone. And then, um, you know, possibly there's another harvest um, soon after possibly of the multitude I'm not sure or it could be you know talking about those that come out of the tribulation but um, let me continue and then for the 11th verse this beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him and again you've seen that in the watch 9-11 a number of times the significance so it could be indicating um, either rapture happened or ha you know or shortly after the tribulation Jacob the trouble started. I'm not sure, but you know time will tell. But I want to show you these numbers in the watches, and that's why I highlight them. Now let me continue. Now from John chapter 21 verses 8 through 12, the, the numbers I want to show you are most significant. I feel. He has 6, 9, and 11. And right here you have the prominent 6 here. You have the 9 right here. And of course you have a 9 over here like a mirror image. And then you have 11. You have Right here you have the 11. And you have 11 here. Which I think is interesting. Now in John chapter 2 verses 1 through 11. That is the wedding at Cana. Okay. You have the 2 and 3. Alright. So you have 23 right here. You have 23 right here. Now, 6 and 6. Now, this is one of the, f the first watches I made. This actually is the first watch I made. And this is over two and a half years ago. You have the, the 6 that looks kind of like a worm on a hook. And then you have another 6 right, right above the omega symbol. Okay. So, that's interesting. You have the 6-6. Six, six, and, again, the 2-3. So, like a 2-3 right here. So, you got a 2-3. You got a 2-3. Kind of like alignment there. And you have eight. Okay, the eight's missing in my original clock. Phil the Lord did not want me to, to put that number there at that time. But later on, months ago, I felt the Lord wanted me to, to add it. So you have the eight here. And my other, I have a number of versions of watches, and it, which included the eight too. So you have an eight here. and But the 911, of course, was in my first one, 911. So you've got 911 in my newest one, and then my initial one, the first one, we have the 911. So that's very interesting. And then this here is in the middle of my matrix. I just noticed this today when I was putting this presentation together. You have 22 right here. Okay, so there's 22. You have 29, actually two spots, 29, 29. So you have 29 right here, okay, and you know, of course you have 9 on its own here, and take a look, at you got 7 and 11 right here, okay, and you know, this is a bit of a stretch maybe, but you have 9 here and then you have 11 up here, of course you have 9, 11 here and 9, 11 here also, so I just thought that was very interesting. So I wanted to include that. So I'm going to continue. Now I want to start here. Now this is a screenshot from the Torah calendar. And this is a previous Passover. This was back the year I was born in 1974. Now according to the Torah calendar, it happened the first month. Okay, and April the 8th. And the reason why I'm including this particular slide is because of this verse Esther. You got chapter 4 verses 16. And then you have the same numbers in the Julian calendar, just in different order. So that's why I include it. Now, we believe that the Passover this year in 2023 was actually April the 20th of 2023. But what I want to show you, again, you're always going to see 14 linked to the Passover. Okay, now 14, the 
meaning linked to it is salvation, and Jesus means salvation, okay? So I wanted to show you Esther chapter 4, verse 16. Let me read that verse for you. It One of the things the Lord said to me back after I received these matrices, back May 25th, 2021, it was shortly after the Lord said to me, it would be like Purim. So that's why I think it's very significant and our Lord's timing is perfect. Now, I'm not saying that the rapture can happen very soon. I don't know. I really believe it will, but I do not know. But I just feel the Lord wants to share this with you, and that's why I'm doing it. So let me read with you Esther chapter 4, verses 16. Go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan, and fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day, I also am. And my maidens will fast likewise, and so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. So this is interesting. Now, this is a you know true story that happened back, you know, recorded by the Bible in the book of Esther. And it's something that it looks like can relate to what we're going to be faced with in the future, while well, those that are left behind, and also the, the Jews, the Jews not only in Israel, but those that are scattered that did not accept their Messiah, Jesus Christ, Yeshua, okay, you will have a second chance, if you're alive, to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, Yeshua. Okay? So you're going to want to turn to God, trust in God, not in man, open your Bible, read Revelation, Daniel, the Gospels, Paul's epistles. If you want to read the whole Bible, you know, I recommend to trust you know, the Word of God, and I recommend the King James Version of the Bible. That's what the, the Lord wanted me to recommend, okay? So I really believe that the Lord is, this is like a rapture type, typology. And the Lord loves to use patterns. Now, I want to show you one more thing here. Now, this watch here, I created with the power of the Holy Spirit back over two and a half years ago. Now, I just want to show you something that was interesting. That the Lord or the Holy Spirit only wanted me to add one place where there's 100 hours. And that was at 4 o'clock, which is 1,600 hours. So that is 416. So this is God behind the scenes. Now, this is not my intent for this to come together. And again, let me go back. And so it lines up with Esther chapter 4, verses 16. And also 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16. Okay, I'm going to continue to the next slide. Now, what I want to do is share with you the scripture verses that the Torah calendar recommended for the second Passover readings. Now, Numbers chapter 9, verses 6 through 14. Okay, I will begin by playing those scripture verses for you now. In the fourteenth day of this month at even, ye shall keep it in his appointed season, according to all the rites of it, and according to all the ceremonies thereof, shall ye keep it. And Moses spake unto the children of Israel, that they should keep the Passover. And they kept the Passover on the fourteenth day of the first month at even, in the wilderness of Sinai, according to all that the Lord commanded Moses. So did the children of Israel. And there were certain men who were defiled by the dead body of a man that they could not keep the Passover on that day. And they came before Moses and before Aaron on that day. And those men said unto him, We are defiled by the dead body of a man. Wherefore are we kept back that we may not offer an offering of the Lord in his appointed season among the children of Israel? And Moses said unto them, Stand still and I will hear what the Lord will command concerning you. 
And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If any man of you or of your posterity shall be unclean by reason of a dead body, or be in a journey afar off, yet he shall keep the Passover unto the Lord. The fourteenth day of the second month, at even, they shall keep it, and eat it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They shall leave none of it unto the morning, nor break any bone of it. According to all the ordinances of the Passover, they shall keep it. But the man that is clean, and is not in a journey, and forbeareth to keep the Passover, even the same soul shall be cut off from among his people, because he brought not the offering of the Lord in his appointed season. So again, very appropriate scripture verses, and again, it could be a typology of the future rapture, but time will tell. Now, I only have a few more slides to go, so let me continue. Now, I want to share a few verses with you, and the first one is Isaiah chapter 46, verses 10. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Again, I pose the question, is the Lord declaring the end from the beginning in this presentation? I don't know, but time will tell. Let me continue. In John chapter 3, verses 16, or John 3.16, one of the most popular verses that is shared today and the most popular Bible verse is memorized. Let me read it for you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, this is the website where this video is housed or stored and also some of my previous videos. It's HTTPS. Again, do not forget the S or it will not be a secure site. Colon slash slash 011235.net. Now, I'm also going to include a slideshow presentation that's got some very important information in it. So please watch that right to the end. And I'm also going to include some important links in the description under this video to important videos so please check those out too so thank you so much for watching i hope you take this message seriously if you are not saved if you do not believe in jesus christ your lord and savior because our lord jesus christ yeshua our father yahweh wants everyone to be saved and so do i so god bless you i love you all not hidden there's never been a moment you were forgotten you are not hopeless though you have been broken your innocence stolen I hear you whisper underneath your breath I hear There is no distance that cannot be covered over and over. You're not defenseless. I'll be a shelter.